Some of the reasons or times in which tayammum is permitted, for example, when, it is, uh, when you are out of water, you run out of water or you cannot find water, or when there, you fear harm from using water, maybe the water is uh, contaminated or the water can cause you, uh, can, you know, can threaten your well-being meaning you could get extremely sick or, or die, perhaps, due to the water. Or, if due to your own sickness or uh, severe cold, extreme temperatures and so forth, that using water, if there is going to be harm, uh, a great amount of harm in using the water, then you should not. Then you should, Tayambu uh, is legislated in those situations. Also, if the price of water, for example, you have you do have some water, doesn't mean you, you don't have water, but you could have water and you need it for drinking. Like in the situation, the man who was on the ship, he said, in the narco, in the, in the, in the narco al when, 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 so this is a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu where a man, he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that we sail on the sea and we carry with us very little water. He said, and if we use the water that we have, we'll become thirsty. Should we make water, uh, should we make uh, wudu from the seawater? This is not for tayammu, but this is showing us that sometimes that the, there are alternatives when you have uh, limited supply of water. But we're going to look at some of the hadiths that relate to when it is uh, permissible to use uh, dry earth, you know, to use clean earth instead of water because you may not have water or by using water it may be harmful. Or if you have a limited means. So in that situation that we just mentioned, although it wasn't a hadith pertaining to Tayyambu, also, likewise, if that a person has water, but it is not sufficient for them to have drinking water and to make wudu, then in this situation, of course, if they, they need the water for drinking, then they should make tayambu. Or, in another particular another situation that the scholars mentioned, is if, in that, that similar situation we just mentioned, but yet, you do have access to water, but the price of water is very expensive. You cannot really afford to spend. It's very, uh, it's very expensive to buy the water. So in this situation, you should make tayyambu. If you do not have the means, and it's going to be a great burden on you to spend and buy, purchase the water, then in that situation, then you should make tayyambu. And a, a real situation for us, uh, uh, a situation that could be more common for us could be a situation you could be out hiking or you could be out on a road trip or what have you and then you have a limited supply limited means of water and you end up having to go to the store and you need you have a limited budget and the water the price of water is a bit expensive and you need that water for food you need that water for other provisions you need that water for your gas for your gasoline. So in that situation, it will be legislated for you to make tayambu instead of spending on the water to make wudu with that water. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. So tayambu is permitted when it's not permissible to use water due to it being unavailable or when some harm is feared from using it due to sickness in the body or severe cold. This is based on the hadith of Imran ibn Hussein, رضي الله عنه, who said, we were, we were with the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on a journey, and he led the people in prayer, but a man stayed away. The message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, what prevented you from praying? He said, I was afflicted by janaba, meaning I, I had the sexual, uh, you know, I had sexual discharge, I had maybe from sperm or, or a wet dream or what have you, 
and there was no water. So the Prophet ﷺ responded to him, Alaykum be Sa'id fa idhu yakfiq. He said, perform tayambu with clean earth, because that's sufficient for you. And this hadith was narrated in Ahmed, also in Bukhari and Muslim. Also, the hadith uh, of Jabir ibn Abdullah, radiallahu anhu, who said, we went on a journey, and a man was hit by a stone which cracked his skull. SubhanAllah, they're, they're uh, a battle, perhaps. Later, he had a uh, he had a wet dream. He asked his companions, can I perform tayammu? They said, no, not if you have water. So he performed a ghusl and died. And the ghusl, meaning the, he took a, uh, the ceremonial bath, he bathed himself, not just making the wudu, but because he had the wet dream and, you know, uh, the discharge had emitted from him, then he, it was required for him to make the ghusl, to make the, to take a, a, a bath instead of just washing himself for uh, prayer. He had to prepare himself by taking a bath. So, the man, he, he performed the ghusl because his, the other companions, they mentioned to him, they said, no, that's not sufficient. You have water. You have to, uh, you know, make a uh, ghusl. So the man died from that. When they came to the message of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa they informed him of what had transpired. And the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Qataluhu. This was narrated in Ahmed or Bukhari or Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ said in relation to this uh, this situation where the man had made perform, you know, washed his whole body and died, he said they killed him when they narr- the companions narrated to him. He said they killed him. Allah will kill them. He said, Why did they not ask if they did not know? Look at the, the benefit from here. There's there's many things we can derive from this hadith. And one of them is is that we should ask when we don't know. And what does Allah say? Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. Ask the scholars. Ask the students of knowledge if that's what you have access to. Ask, uh, ask your, your local imam uh, or what have you. Ask those people who have some knowledge. So the Prophet ﷺ said, The rescue of the ignorant person is the question. It would have been sufficient for him to perform tayammum and drop water on his wound or wrap it with something and wipe over the wrapping then wash the rest of his body. So this illustrates for us the ruling and when it is legislated to make tayammu, and that if it's going to be a harm to make ghusl, or a harm to uh, perform the wudu, even if you have water, but it's going to cause harm to you, bodily harm, then you should perform, perform tayammu. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Anything that I said was incorrect was for myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyin Muhammad.